What is up? It's a figure hunter, and today we have the coup de gras. We have the final review of the Garmin Epix Pro 51 millimeter versus the Apple Watch Ultra. Over the last few weeks, we looked at them against sort of head to head, just sort of out of the box to see who had what specs or what detailed differences, who led the way in smartwatch features and led the way in training and wellness and recovery features. And right out of the gate, we saw a definitive line in the sand between the two. The Apple Watch Ultra demolished the Garmin as far as smartwatch capabilities. It's a little miniature computer on your wrist. You can turn your TV off with it. You can do all sorts of fancy, neat tricks. But we also realized that the Garmin demolished the Apple Watch Ultra when it comes to true heart rate variability tracking and recovery tracking and training tracking, both from the workout analysis as well as the training loads over time. So if you want to see that out of the box only review, you can look in the description below. Additionally, this is going to have a lot of subsets to it, this review today. And so you can look in the description below for how to jump to the next section. We also looked at a head to head competition of the heart rate accuracy when doing the most intense sort of high intensity interval type training and specifically CrossFit. And we saw the Apple Watch Ultra really continues to be the heart rate king. It's, it came out more accurate, but the new Garmin Elevate 5.0 and the Pro series of Garmin watches is as good as it could possibly, you would possibly need it to be to get full training analytics, which is what you would want to get out of it. So it was like super high accuracy there as well. So what we're going to talk about today is we're not going to look at hardware differences. We're not going to talk about smartwatch features. We already established the Apple Watch crushes the Garmin and, you know, there's no app that's going to add, going to add to the Garmin um, to make it an Apple Watch competitive in the smartwatch zone. So we're just going to look at the wellness, recovery, and sleep type apps. We're going to look at the in the workout data, if you wanted to replicate the experience of like using your watch in a workout, we're going to look at the workout analysis only. So like what does it tell you at the end of a workout or what apps could be used to tell you something? And then we're going to look at the training load analysis. And over on top of all of it, we're going to talk about the overall cost increase that you would have to really view your Apple Watch Ultra to add on top to be competitive or to have the suite of apps to be able to keep up with the suite of comprehensive functions on the Garmin out of the gate. So with that, let's look first at wellness, recovery, and sleep data. All right, so within Garmin, there's a multiple of different wellness and recovery, overnight recovery metrics, as well as sleep score. So you have the body battery, which is actually 24-7 HRV tracking, which tracks the impact on um, your day on your overall internal reserves and your overall recovery. You can see when you're running depleted, like I have been, that it doesn't quite, you know, get rejuvenated all the time because you're doing extra workouts and not getting enough sleep. It just shows it definitively and clearly. Your HRV status, which is just a concentrated focused look at your HRV uh, the night before. So you can see 30 milliseconds and you can see your average you can track it across days to see if you're still in the red like i am but a concentrated review of your hrv at night heart rate variability and then training readiness which is obviously more for training but it is a wellness metric and it takes into account six factors two of which were the last 24 hours and four of which were the last seven days just your trends over time and then Behind that, you have the sleep metrics. So obviously you have the basic stages of sleep, whether they get it right or wrong, you can track your pulse ox and your rep respiration, but it culminates it all in a sleep score, which is six factors deep. So it is heavily weighted based on your body battery recovery or your HRV, your stress level. So it takes into account multiple factors and I found it to be really helpful and really pretty much accurate with what I am feeling. So if you were to compare that, so my HRV clearly 30 milliseconds last night, you compare it to something that's sort of established like whoop, 66% recovered. That's sort of like a combination between the sleep score and the body battery here. But if you look at the others on the market, so sports tracker actually has a recovery feature, which I didn't realize wasn't turned on. So it doesn't have as much recovery metrics or wellness metrics. I have been tracking training today, but I have found it to not be always reliable and not provide great direction especially it doesn't really give you a summary of your last night and how well the last night was so then you have chipper chipper does give you a recovery score very much like 
WHOOP does, and you can see your HRV, 34 milliseconds in the middle, as well as your sleep score, which is basically just the percentage of your overall goal of eight hours or something like that. Um, chip or gentler streak is fair, but it doesn't give you any clear recommendations other than a happy face or a sad face or a medium face. And it just basically regurgitates all the stats from your Apple Health, just pulls them through, but doesn't give you just a, any kind of clear analysis when it comes to things. Um, you have Envy, which will give you this morning report, but Envy actually just feels a little bit more glitchy, meaning this morning report doesn't always pop up until like two hours after I've been awake. But it does give you uh, your recovery score and a zone recommendation and a sleep score. Now, the sleep score is actually a sleep score uh, versus just overall time versus some particular goal. And the recovery score based on, based on HRV. But you can see in the middle right, the HRV is stated at 21. You know, Chipper had HRV at 33, I think, once at 34. And then the last and I think the most comprehensive with some glitches is Athletic App. Athletic App will give you recovery score and your sleep score. And we'll look at those two things separately as well as I do like that it gives you a quick snapshot of all your health stats, similar to what you would get with Gentler Streak, but what more well organized. And it's just a good place. I like to go in the morning just to sort of see a summary of the health snapshots that pulled through from Apple Health. The recovery score is based on heart rate variability. It says 37. So we think about that. So Envy, which is pulling from Apple Health, said 21 or something like that. Chipper, which is pulling from Apple Health, said 34. And then Athletic is pulling, and it's pulling a 37. And it takes that across your baseline to determine a recovery based on heart rate variability. But those are all different numbers. They're all pulling from the same data, but they all have different numbers, which is inherently the problem with all these third-party applications not as helpful because they're just who's right i don't know they're all pulling the same data but it just looks glitchy and they're all based on their small teams because usually there's just you know a small team of people writing these algorithms or trying to see how to assess information coming in from apple health but athletic does go further meaning it takes your sleep performance pulls through the stages, which is great. And one thing I really like is that it gives you this restorative sleep estimate. So how much of the really strong stages like REM and deep sleep was your sleep last night, which is a good metric just to sort of evaluate. And then it has a sleep debt calculator, which again, I like. And here's where the problem is though with all these apps is, you know, you have a baseline where Apple Health, Apple Health doesn't, it doesn't, Apple Watch doesn't claim to give accurate heart rate variability. Even if you turn AFib tracking on, it's going to take the measurement every 15 or so minutes throughout the night, which is still not really enough accuracy or not as frequent enough to get full accuracy. But then they have these glitches because they don't claim to do it exactly correct, where you have some serious deviations like i looked at this yesterday and there was five significant deviations from my baseline from like what would be the average across the bottom that were just huge spikes it was much worse yesterday and it varies day to day so here you have a super high score that's way off the baseline of 92 in the beginning part of the night and then a questionable one sort of in the middle but Either way, you really should take out at least the 92 to get a more accurate HRV so that it is giving you a more accurate uh, recommendation for how much recovery you have. But the best part about Athletic is that it does give you a deeper dive into sleep and some other metrics that nobody else pulls together. So this big comprehensive sleep coupled with your you know, recovery snapshot. I would just recommend that you go into Apple Health and you basically delete the heart rate variability aspects that look like they're off the baseline. So you would go in here and you would go show all data. And this is just a big pain in the butt. Don't really love it. But we would go down to the beginning part of the night and you would swipe to the left on wherever that 92 is. And there it is. And then you delete it and it's going to change all the athletic scores, going to change actually the scores for everybody. But it feels unreliable because there's a lot of over the average baseline, like significantly over the average, usually 200%, 300% of your average throughout the night. So athletics still 
feels like the most comprehensive, although I don't really always feel like I can trust the recovery recommendation because of the faulty HRV tracking from the Apple Watch. Now, what do we see in the sleep, wellness, training, you know, the overall recovery things, not training. So wellness, recovery, and sleep analysis. There are apps that can give you pieces of information, but it, to me, there was a lot of days where I had three apps pulling the same information that I had a broad spectrum, like a 20 out of 100 recovery, a 40, and a 60. Additionally, even just today, when I showed you a sample of like that erroneous HRV, which is the bedrock for determining recovery on a lot of these apps, today my HRV had a baseline sort of averaged around 40 and had a singular data point of 230, which I had never seen. And it literally took my athletic score. When I removed the 230, which is impossibly incorrect, it took my recovery from 69% down to 47%. Major differential. So the HRV really isn't trustworthy unless you mine the data yourself. And in general, I just feel like it doesn't it all at all compete with Garmin when it comes to the HRV tracking, the body battery tracking, the training readiness, you know, as well as the sleep score, which takes into account so many different factors. So moving on to the next stage, let's just look at a simple app that would help you replicate the workout data you might want to see on the watch. All right. So there's a couple things. The Workout Doors app is very elaborate. Um, so let's go back to Garmin. So like here's the Garmin one. If you want to add a data screen, you can add it. If you want to change like the overall layout, you can pick from a series of layouts and then you can go through the fields and pick, you know, you can pick information from like all over the place, but it categorizes it. It's a little bit cleaner, but it's a visually, uh, I don't know, you more, you can accept it more, but you just, you have your little layout. It's well organized. Now, if you go to workout doors, it shows you a collection of things that are very similar but very exhaustive, like, holy cow, like, look at, I mean, it, I, I took out some of the over detailed pages, but if you were to just go to this, and you were look to, in the middle left categories, all middle left, how many available metrics do you see middle right above the list, 229 available metrics. Now that is, that's a lot. So you can customize the living hell out of this, you can customize all sorts of things. The only thing that's different is that Garmin actually allows you to customize data fields that include workout rigor evaluation, like how much training load you built up on the workout. Like if you look at my, you know, this is just, you know, basic information because I haven't said it, but you can, you can set your workout rigor and get your aerobic training effect as one column. You can get your anaerobic training effect. Plus you can do your you know, you can count your rounds, you can count your last rap time, you can check your pacing with your current lap time, current round time. You can do all that, but work outdoors, it's it's very lengthy. It, it's just a, a lot to it, and you have to really get into the nuances to make it work. So again, here's another area where the Apple Watch Ultra, you can like kind of create it. It doesn't have any uh, rigor evaluation metrics. Cause again, there's not a rigor evaluation being done unless you have a third party app in some other universe. It just can give you like concrete information. And yes, the work outdoors app, it has access to every piece of concrete information, laps, intervals, buttons, graphs that relate to the workout. Um, uh, but the training evaluation, it doesn't have any of that because it just doesn't exist. Um, but it's, it's, it's also, it's just, it's just a lot to set up and it's just a lot to get into. Um, whereas in the Garmin world, you just say, I want to add a data screen and you want to make custom. And he's like, how many fields? I want it to have six fields. And I want the first field that pops up to be a workout rigor field, you know, where I can just go into uh, the heart rate fields. And then I can say, well, I really want my training effect gauge and it'll give you aerobic and anaerobic up to that point in the workout. So there's again, the difference. All right. So here's how the basics look in each of the devices. When you have the Garmin, I like, you know, the Garmin a lot because it's clear and easy to read information, but it's also, you can change the quadrants and change the information and even add analytical information, you know, like physiological information in there, like the aerobic and anaerobic accumulation throughout the workout. I just use a few basic screens, so I'm not using anything in complex. Then you have the Workout Doors app, which you can make your own complexity. You can make it this big screen here, 
and it'll have a multiple of different pieces of information. In simple terms, though, like the Garmin is just so much more comfortable in a workout, especially if you're sweating a ton and you're doing a lot of movement and you're actually at the death point where your heart rate is super peaked. You can just see the information you want, or you can go to a screen that makes the information bigger, or you can just go to a screen where you just check in your heart rate. It's just easy to control. It's all button press driven. And the work outdoors gives a solution, but is just so much less enjoyable of an experience. If you get it wet, you can't control some of the screen functionality. And, um, you know, you can track your laps. Obviously, you can do different things that are similar to a Garmin. But to me, it uh, is just not nearly as enjoyable or even as functionally useful because the way it's laid out, it makes the best of a debilitated situation. All right, so in testing, it does have the ability to add a bunch of features. None of them like the physiologically analytical features that you would get on the Garmin. But I will tell you in testing both of these, I can't stand tracking workouts on an Apple Watch if I want to make any adjustments at any time. And even at the end, because this is North Carolina, it gets super hot in the summer. I am shooting blood out of uh, shoot, shooting shooting sweat out of all my pores. Like on average, I have a thermometer that gyms ninety three to ninety four degrees. I, there's sweat everywhere, and I can't stand to use the Apple Watch for any kind of adjustments. Um, and then even the water can make adjustments at times. Even just touching the side button has caused problems in certain workouts. So the Garmin. It's just so much more functionally capable, but just easy to use the information in a way that would make sense for a workout. So next, we're going to look at the workout analysis you can glean from a multiple of apps. The thing I'm going to say out of the gate, the disclaimer on all this, is a ton of this information is not found in your watch. So if you start your workout on the watch and you look at the analysis on the, analysis on the watch, you're going to get very limited data on most of these things and you have to go to the app to even get some feedback on the difficulty of the workout all of the detail and even more than sometimes you can find on the app is available on the garmin so with that let's dive in to the workout analysis part all right so here you have one of the basic evaluations for garmin's workouts is the training effect so the aerobic and anaerobic so like how much impact you had on those types of your fitness, whether it's the aerobic side of your fitness or the anaerobic side of your fitness. So this was basically like a 45 minute run, all at a relatively high heart rate with some pull-ups and sit-ups and just simple things combined. And plus Garmin adds to it uh, these primary exercise load, the training load, like the actual quantifiable rigor score. And when, you know, you think about what Garmin provides, it provides Definitely all these things in the app, but even more so, you get a clear summary of all of this workout evaluation in the watch itself, coupled with the recovery time. When the recovery time takes into account your sleep and your heart rate variability through your body battery, as well as the rigor of each individual workout to estimate how much time you have to the next workout. So that's actually a big point. So then you have an app called HealthFit. HealthFit does do a training load score. So you get a couple of different types of score, the heart rate stress score and the training impulse. So that flows through to the next part we'll talk about, but it doesn't present it in a big glorious way and it doesn't present it on the watch. So you actually have to go into the app to get this sort of simple, you know, tinier uh, snapshot amongst a long list of different details from the workout. So then you have Envy. Envy does a couple different things. It just sort of evaluates your workout strain, like the individual strain for the workout, and then culminates it in a daily strain, sort of like the whoop score, it's every zero to 100. You can see like how hard you worked in general that day or how hard you worked in general in a particular workout to evaluate if your workout rigor is, is where it needs to be. Then you have Chipper. Chipper does like a daily summary as well. So it'll give you actually like a score for the individual workout. You can see that down below. And then it'll give you a score for the day. So it does give you a score for that workout like Whoop, like Athletic, which we'll look at in a second, and just a summary for the day. And then if you look back at this workout again, just a lot, you know, because we're going to look at Athletic next, but the training effect, you know, aerobic and anaerobic, there's no others that evaluate what contribution to your fitness from aerobic capacity and anaerobic capacity was had from this workout, but this was a 45 minute workout where my heart rate stayed very high throughout. So it was not primarily an anaerobic because anaerobic is, is more primarily short burst. It could not be sustained for 45 minutes. Um, not just based on pure what zone of heart rate I was in. 
And if you look at athletic, it does give you the overall strain score, the overall, you know, evaluation of the workout in that primary effort field. But then they also sort of categorize it aerobic and anaerobic, but it's purely based on what heart rate zones you had for what time. So this is 90%. So 45 minute workout, 90% anaerobic is, is just not right. Now it, there are schools of thought that say, well, anytime you're in zone four and five, it's anaerobic work, but an anaerobic workout for 45 minutes is not really categorized as anaerobic, in my opinion. You can see that that's it's just basing it primarily on the fact that my heart rate zones were so high. Um, then you have sports tracker. Sports tracker, it doesn't give it in a big, bold fashion. So your training stress score, the middle right is the sort of rigor evaluation. And they also do give recovery time, although it's usually like half or, you know, 75% of what it should be. So that workout was pretty hard and it definitely had a 24 hour plus time frame for a next workout. So it doesn't give it correctly, but, uh, and I don't like that it puts it on this little box score, but they do a number of other things in how they take that information and evaluate your training over time, which we'll talk about in the next session. Okay. So looking at the workout analysis itself, I just continue to feel like number one, I hate being app dependent. And number two, I don't get enough workout analysis information. We're going to talk about sports tracker in this next section as being something that I really do enjoy from a training load evaluation. But when it comes to workout exertion evaluation, none of these apps really cut it for me. None of these apps compare at least to what I've been experiencing and using on a Garmin for a long time, the level of depth, the level of specificity, the level of you know, direction of, as far as what types of training you're doing, as far as what types of load, as far as what type of uh, impact you're having on your fitness, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic, your overall recovery time, which takes into account a bunch of factors. The Apple Watch Ultra does not, even with all these apps or any one of these apps, does not compete with Garmin at all on workout analysis. Even the fact that it's all right there on the Garmin watch, if you want to see it all clearly displayed. So let's look at training loads. So obviously you want to see that the workout was evaluated for how hard you pushed it. We also want to have an app search give us some feedback. Are we training too much? Are we training too little? Are we pushing our fitness higher by looking at our training over the course of a long period of time? So let's dive in. All right. So next we want to look at just what workout guidance broadly for the training you've done this week versus past eight weeks. Is it helping you understand how your training is improving or decreasing or if your fitness is improving or decreasing? So on the main landing page, as well as all over the watch, which again, you got to think this app is really it's, it's, it's just a backup to the watch because I actually get a lot of this core information from the watch, which is the opposite of what you would get from the Apple Watch. So here you go into the training status. It says strained, you know, because I've been working out more again, because that's just been my goal. And then you can go into the load. You can see what types of load, whether it's anaerobic, highly aerobic or lowly aerobic. You can see the days I've put in. These are not time accumulations these are rigor scores so like how hard was the workout and you can see the workout today because it was continuation at such a high pay heart rate and then you can see my load over time so it gives you this sort of a mass load you can overlay it your averages so you can see my acute load my last seven days is like well over my chronic load my long-term average for how much i've been working out and then you can apply now these day these days to the load ratio i think they need to totally clean this up because i think the load ratio should, should be like on the front page not this you know threefold into the systems and it shouldn't be this small number down at the bottom right which is the current ratio of 1.5 it shows that i'm like i'm like on the brink of overtraining. so how do we replicate that you know in simple terms how do we replicate you know just this acute load chart over time coupled with the chronic load chart over time so everybody does some of these things so health fit actually does a pretty good job god every time i go out of it and come back in it, it resets so they have the simple acute training load coupled with chronic training load coupled with form, which is just like whether you're pushing your body harder and a higher negative means that you are working more recently than you have in the past. But I don't really love their layout, but they do provide it. You can see your training load just across the days, you know, over a spectrum of time. You can see the dots. It's sort of like Garmin. So you can accumulate a lot of the same information. I've got a lot of different app sources flowing into this, so the number's way bigger than it should be. Um, but overall, you can see simple metrics. It just 
It just doesn't appear anywhere in the watch if you wanted to see it on the fly there. Then you have Chipper. Chipper just gives you sort of simple things, um, your activity scores across time. It doesn't really give you much information, but on the landing page, you get this training zone that just sort of is saying that like you worked out hard enough just today, not looking at history based on your recovery today. Same thing with if we go to athletic, it you know, it's just going to give you like a today evaluation of, you know, my exertion is sort of in that green zone for how much recovery I had. So the exertion matched the amount of recovery, not looking at trends, although you can see your exertion over time. And you can get some of that, you know, coupled with some of the trends, your recovery versus exertion. So, again, that's not a training load. So don't look at that. But you can see your exertion. It doesn't help you understand how your training is going in the last multiple of days versus a longer period of time. Um, so one interesting one that we haven't talked about is or maybe we did in the wellness is gentler streak. It actually gives you this simple chart. I don't like the way this app looks at all. I don't like the way it's sort of designed as far as it looks just, I don't know, it just looks soft and goofy. But it does give you a training load chart. So you can see if your training load is going up or down and if it's staying in the green bars based on how they evaluate things. It just doesn't give you much information otherwise. So it just shows you the chart. You can't dive into anything. And so whether you like to dive into things or not, that's up to you. Envy just gives you your overall activity loads over the course of a multiple of days and it, you know, workout strain. So again, you're not seeing like a trend over time. It's not guiding your fitness. The best, in my opinion, is Sports Tracker. I just like the way it looks. I like the way it calculates things because it does two things really well when it comes to training guidance based on workouts this week versus last week and past four weeks. Is It gives you that same sort of health fit score, but more summarized, more simple, more clean. You can change the period of time across multiple gaps, but it shows you that, yes, I have a lot more strain recently than I do fitness supposedly to keep up with it but it does something also that's really significant is if you go into the overview tab of the training load you get like a lot of really helpful guidance when it comes to training load and you can dive into these details you can evaluate how much time you spent in each zone per week which is kind of kind of big you can evaluate it compared to averages and then the overall impact and the types of impacts your simple recommendations and your fitness change is sort of like it got all these coaching things. So athletic hands down to me gives you the best value for evaluating the rigor of a workout as well as your training more broadly. Even if it's in the rigor of a workout evaluation, it's only giving you this like one little basic number to the middle right of that, you know, nine cube is the training stress score. That's your only real metric that evaluates the rigor but at the same time they put it all in a chart form and you know it gives you a lot of clarity so this you know again see that um there's all sorts of stuff there's that same training load evaluation so these are the only ones that actually sort of accomplish it i just think sports tracker is the most clean and to me the most valuable that might compare to garmin okay so this is one area where the Sports Tracker app, I really do like the information. I like the analysis. I, I like how it is giving you worthwhile feedback on your training from recent and going back in history. All the other apps, you know, like Athletic, I don't think counts in this. HealthFit does a version of it, it just doesn't look nearly as pretty and doesn't provide any of these directions on Sports Tracker. You know, Chipper gives you those workout rigor scores or the daily score, just like Athletic. I just, you know, in simple terms, I think there's only Sports Tracker and Sports Tracker alone if you want to track your training load over time. I don't feel that it in any way has the extensive specificity on your training, meaning what types of training load you're doing and how much volume you're building in different types of training zones. I don't think it competes, but I think it's at least something that's worthwhile that I would appreciate seeing and would be somewhat competitive with Garmin. This is the only area I could even say this about so far to, up to now. So now we have to look at the cost of each of the, you know, so we obviously have, there's like a straight cost just to have the workout doors out to, you know, add it on. There's a cost for your workout analysis and training load. And then there's a cost for the wellness recovery, sleep recommendations. So to look at the cost of all those things collectively to get a gauge for, you know, how many of these apps you're going to need and 
how much is it going to cost if you're looking at, again, competitive or comparison to the Garmin Epix Pro? All right, so just looking at a simple cost analysis, obviously the watch costs $800. If you want the Work Outdoors app, that's 8 bucks. That's a one-time purchase. Great. Really, if you're going to do any training and want to track your training load, Sports Tracker is, to me, the most comprehensive version. That's $4.50 a month, which I'm just looking at everything over a two-year period. You do get one month free. So that's going to be $103 for that two-year period. So obviously, you might keep your watch for three years or four years, and so the cost accumulation adds up. And then you have your wellness, recovery, or sleep. So like maybe an all-encompassing one. You know, each of them had their own problems. And, you know, it's just hard to say if it's completely trustworthy information because they're limited in what they're relying on because the Apple Watch doesn't track all of the metrics that it should, even if you can force them to turn on a little bit more frequently. Um, so athletic, you know, probably the most comprehensive in some degrees and is $48 over the two years chipper, which, you know, I liked as well was $60. I actually like Onvi the best for how it pulls together information, but it's also the most expensive $216 gentler streak. I didn't like that for either training load or for wellness, but it's 50 bucks a year. If you did want it, so hundred dollars. So if you look at the range of cost. You got eight plus 103.5 plus either 48 for the two year period or 216. That's a range of additional cost of 159 to 327. And the total watch cost being 960 to 1125. Obviously, you know, we might not get on V, although I, I did like how it put things together because it, it, it layered in multiple different factors and I felt like it had intuitive sense, even though the app was still glitchy. But you're looking at $1,000 for an Apple Watch if you really want to accomplish or replicate the basics of experience in a much more debilitated format to the Garmin Phoenix Pro or the Garmin Epix Pro. So cost analysis complete, they are about the same price. All right, so what do we see in all this, whether we're looking at replicating the workout functionality or the wellness and recovery or the workout analysis itself or the training load or the cost or any of those things? The first thing you'll see that this was an incredibly difficult review to do because there were like little bits and pieces from all these third party apps, but then some of those little bits and pieces didn't quite function all the time the way that they should have because these apps are coming from multiple places with small, you know, less than 10 person teams running their own algorithms or trying to make use of Apple's data. So looking at all that, it was, it was exhausting in, in, in a sense to look at all these different apps and to try to get a picture of my overall health and training. And that's the fundamental problem in all this. And so I would summarize it very simply like this. The Apple Watch Ultra is awesome if the smartwatch experience is your primary and most important driving force for watch you're wearing on your arm. And the Garmin is awesome if your fitness, wellness, recovery, and training is your primary driving force for what watch you have on your arm. Because the Apple Watch Ultra with all these dizzying apps still definitely does not compete. You know, the Garmin just demolishes it just like the Apple Watch demolishes the Garmin as a smartwatch. The Garmin is so far ahead with its comprehensive, simple, all-in-one-place nature, the level of specificity, the number of things. We didn't even talk about the number of specific sports profiles and the fact that you can take this to a golf course and it'll tell you how far to the tee. And, you know, you can replicate some of those things. But it's just built in this watch. You could go surfing and track your runs. You could go skiing and see a ski map, a ski resort. There's just so much more. The Apple Watch Ultra or any family of Apple Watches definitely does not compete if your driving force is your wellness and improving your wellness, is your fitness and improving your fitness, is having an understanding of how to take your health and your strength and your fitness overall goals to another level. So that is my summary. And it, you know, it's been hard to sort of try to figure out how I was going to put some of these thoughts together. So that's the sum, summation of the competition in the end of the day with all the apps under the, you know, in the earth for the Apple Watch Ultra versus the Garmin Epix Pro. It's the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.